going to practice the crow. Now, if you haven't done this one in a while, get those knees up as high as you can on your tricep. Get your weight forward on your hands and then just lift one foot up. Get, get that feeling, get that weight through the arms. Soon you'll be lifting the other foot and then you can just sort of focus on holding this for time. And then just try to get into that calm, kind of like an ice bath. You want to get into that calm place in your head where you're just focusing on one thing and just enjoying that pressure through the wrists and the arms and the shoulders and sort of get into that state where you're accepting the challenge. And then from there, quick upward dog and that one's really important for your wrists too I treat so many people with stiff wrists they can't even do push-ups anymore because their wrists are so stiff and again what do you think is going to happen when you fall on the ice let's say if you live in a place like Canada or Scandinavia and you're an elderly person and you fall on the ice well if your wrist you've never done this in years and years first thing that's going to go are the bones so Keep your wrists healthy, just, just for the, the fact of function, not only injury prevention. Okay, now the next primal move is, again, we're in the same position as this one. Instead of doing this, we're coming back to that home base, hopping forwards and bring a leg out. Coming back, back, leg out. Hopping back, hopping forwards, Leg out, hopping back, hopping forwards, leg out, okay? I didn't do this one for a long time, but I think there's a lot of value in it just in terms of sort of that mind-muscle connection and that mental map of coordination. And I'm certainly still getting better at these than when I started, but it's, uh, it's a nice movement. Very simple, very natural feeling once you get onto it. But I notice that when I get into cold rivers, it's a natural movement in the sense that when you're getting in and the rocks are slippery, the first thing you might find you do is bring one arm back to recalibrate your balance. So this one reinforces that sort of safety maneuver our bodies do naturally. And then from there, you can burn them out by just going here, skip the hop, just come back, come back, come back, okay? And once you're done that, again, more stress on the shoulders, good stress. Not so much stress that if you go and work out, you can't do it, but enough stress that you're, you're reminding those muscles that they're not allowed to get thin and brittle and atrophied as we get older. Next one, the bridge. Now, this is how to start, okay? If you haven't done this in a while, this is a great way. Get your hands beside your head and then just lift the hips. Kind of get, okay, I can feel that. But most, most people can progress from there to the point where they can at least get up on top of their head and then Okay, this is very natural movement. And then from there, deep breath in, push up, come back down. Up, come back down. And what that does is really works those muscles and sinews and ligaments and tendons and everything in to the hands, the palms, and Again, if we can do this sort of thing when we're 80 years old, we're gonna be a lot better off. So, but it does take daily practice. Not once a week, not twice a week, but every day. It's okay to miss a day once in a while, but do your best not to, because really once you get onto this and it becomes a part of your routine, it doesn't take that long. It might take you 10 minutes on days where you know that that's the only workout you're going to get, it might take you 20 minutes, but it really is uh, a good thing. Now I added a new one on lately that I think a lot of, it's from Bikram Yoga. And you've got your hands underneath your body. 
That is crucial. Yeah. So underneath your body, your hands are together. You, you wiggle your body around to get onto your arms. And that's your platform. Then you're going to lift your legs, push your hands as hard as you can into the floor, have your face facing the floor. But I think for the low back, this is a really safe way to put a ton of tension onto your low back which is good. We want to keep our low back strong in more ways than just lifting kettlebells or deadlifting. Okay, so here we are. I'm laying onto my arms. I'm going to get my pinkies together, hands spread nice and wide apart. Okay, I want to make sure you can hear me. Okay. Hands wide apart. And I'm going to scooch my hips back and forth so I can get my arms right underneath. Now, I'm going to do my best to keep my feet together. Deep breath in, push into the mat, lift up. And down. This works. The upper back works. The arms, and it works. That. Now when you're there, and you're getting with partial leg raises and go until you feel muscles right along your belt line kick in. Meanwhile, this whole, uh, I hate labeling things and I've heard this label lately called MAPS, middle age pull-up syndrome. I don't like it, I don't like that term because I'm middle aged. <laughs> And I get, I get where the term comes from. I, when I started doing pull-ups at work, my elbows did get a little bit cranky. Why? I had calcification in them that I didn't know I had until I started doing pull-ups every day at work. Uh, so I had it fixed. I had somebody grind it out of there for me and I ground it out myself. I'll show you that later. Different topic for a different day. But um, anyway, the... Uh, the whole labeling things and not doing things because of somebody said that there's a thing called maps, I don't like it. So getting back to the original tangent, doing that every day and loading through your arms in here, that's going to strengthen these, these tendons and ligaments and, and prevent you know, things from becoming brittle and weak. That's what happens. When we become brittle and weak, that's when we start having injuries. So that's my... Uh, morning routine. I do that every day. Uh, sometimes if I don't do it in the morning, I'll do it at some point during the day. But it's a really important part of my life and my fitness level. Um, I have another routine that I do at night before I go to bed that's a lot more relaxing than this, but I think uh, every bit is beneficial. So stay tuned for that. And thank you for watching. If you watch the whole thing, I hope I didn't ramble on too much, but this means a lot to me. And if you don't like this program, at least adopt a daily practice that you do like that will address all of these areas of your mobility. So uh, have a great day.